Oppo had a great coming out party into the top tier smartphone market with the release of their Find 5. And now to follow up on the success of that, they decided to think a little bit outside the box with a phone that just might be a little too big for that box. Hey, it's Joshua Gar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the Oppo N1. In this 6-inch device, we're going to be seeing not only size, but some interesting design choices, starting from the bottom and going to the top. All of the ports on the N1 are located on the bottom, opting for a somewhat different layout that allows for the sides to remain pretty minimalistic. There we have the headphone jack, the micro USB port, and the rather small speaker. It admittedly does succeed at freeing up the sides, but might not always be practical. The sides have a thick rim and house the button layout all on the right side, located lower on the device, which is a great move. You'll be able to trigger the power button pretty easily, and also the volume rocker is even lower on the device, which actually makes it pretty nice, especially when you're on the phone. We see the 5.9 inch screen up front, but while that is quite a size already, a pretty thick bezel all around it further adds to the girth. There is even more up top with the camera optics and then down below with the capacitive keys. The back is made up of a smooth material all of the literature will tell you is ceramic-like. In reality, it is aluminum modified to have a soft touch feel. It feels really nice and is one material choice least prone to fingerprinting or smudges. An etching is barely noticeable a little bit higher than in the middle. This is the O-Touch area, which is a secondary touch sensitive space that is supposed to make life on such a large device even easier. More on that in a bit. Finally, we make it to the top in what is perhaps Oppo's most unique addition, the rotating 13 megapixel camera. The entire unit rotates in a 206 degree arc, allowing not only for rear facing shots, but also for a high quality front facing self portrait beast. While moving parts often run the risk of wearing out over time, Oppo claims that it can withstand a ton of rotations and never lose fidelity. So far, that does seem to hold up. Try going from these capacitive keys all the way back up top to the notification drop down with one hand. It just simply can't be done. This is definitely a phone made for two hands, but thankfully, it is a good looking one to boot, and it has a material choice that gives it very good looks, as well as a weight that keeps it from being too heavy. So you should still have an enjoyable time having this in both of your hands. The N1 comes with a 5.9 inch IPS display that gives 1080p resolution and packs 373 pixels per inch. These are specifications that we'd expect on a large screen and they happen to work pretty well. IPS screens tend to mean high brightness and even in daylight the N1 performs pretty well. The aptly named Color OS puts this screen through its paces. While the blacks might not be too deep, the color still is very pleasant and thus provides a good experience whether you're watching videos or reading text. Big screens equal big media, and you should be able to enjoy just about anything on this screen. Well, after you've done what you need to navigate on it. The N1 actually falls short a little bit by not packing the fastest current processing package available. The Snapdragon 600 at 1.7 GHz and the Adreno 320 power this beast, putting it just behind the Snapdragon 800 performers, empirically. Thankfully, the Snapdragon 600 still holds up just fine and provides a good experience through the flourishes and smooth transitions of Color OS. After quite a bit of daily use, I never found myself delayed while needing to do my tasks. While there might be snappier experiences out there, the N1 is definitely not far behind. Hardware takes on some of that out-of-the-box thinking here, but we'll get to the N1's little friend in a second. 16 or 32 gigabyte varieties of the N1 are available, though not expandable due to this unibody design. You won't be getting into the back to remove that battery and to replace it, but that's okay because this 3610 milliamp hour unit performs very well. After an entire weekend of going out, taking pictures, taking calls, and even downloading a bunch of apps via mobile networks, the Oppo N1 was able to last throughout the entire weekend and finally tuck it out after pretty much two full work days. If large phones are supposed to mean a lot of longevity, the Oppo N1 is a shining example of good battery life in that game. I did find, however, that Bluetooth had a couple issues. When paired to my LG Tone Bluetooth headphones, the sound came through just fine and the connection held, but the button sometimes wouldn't work. Call quality was good, as the top speaker provided good sound and very little drop-off. Speaking of networks, the Oppo N1 does not have LTE support, so whether you're on AT&T or T-Mobile in the States, you're just gonna have to settle for HSDPA connectivity. And if you thought the speaker on the bottom of the phone was a little small, well it is and it has the quality to match. The N1 is able to get pretty loud, considering, but its sound is almost expectedly just below average. 
And now we can get to the O-Touch area, which is found pretty much around the middle of the back portion of the Oppo N1. It basically is a secondary touch sensitive area that allows you to do some extra tasks that otherwise wouldn't be very easy on this huge screen. You can basically just tap or swipe your finger in that area and it allows you to swipe among the home screens in your galleries or if you tap it while you're in the camera app you will be able to take an easy self-portrait. Currently it is a rather limited technology but it should open up in possibilities with the SDK being sent out to developers. For now though it is just a really nice idea that has yet to show its full potential. And finally, the O-Click. This small module is a little unassuming and actually has a nice look to it. As you would expect, this is a Bluetooth module that allows for phone finding and vice versa. However, with the unique camera, Oppo also added in the O-Click as a wireless trigger. It works pretty much as advertised and there weren't any real issues that I found. As a handy little tool, the O-Click being bundled in with the N1 package is a very welcome addition that definitely adds to its value. Now we can talk about that rotating camera. To be fair, a rotating camera is not necessarily new, but it is in the smartphone space, especially for a phone as huge as the N1. This 13 megapixel shooter provides high-end specifications and 1080p video capture with a few extras in the app. You don't get too much manual control, but some scenes and filters are available to get you just what you need. And after taking a picture, an interesting beautify feature allows you to get extra post-editing done, even going as far as applying a makeup palette over your subject's face. Quality coming from the six-piece lens construction yields pretty good shots. Indeed, you'll get vibrant and really nice pictures out in the daylight and in very well-lit situations, further enhanced by the included HDR capabilities. Some of the shots I got were really great with nice color reproduction and quite a bit of detail. The only thing that was really lacking, even in perfect conditions, was stabilization. It's very easy to get a blurry shot if you don't have super steady hands. My best advice in these cases is to take a bunch of shots at once. That way you can make sure that at least one of them will probably be just right. You already wouldn't take this huge phone out for a night out on the town. But even if you did, the low light performance is pretty lacking. The dual flash diode does help, somewhat, but is often so bright that it washes out detail. It is supposed to provide a nice skin tone and in a way it does, but it does that at the cost of some detail in your subject's face, which might not be the best trade-off. Speaking of trade-offs, if you do decide to try taking shots without the flash, you better have a steady hand, because a lack of stabilization makes getting good shots kind of difficult. Downloaded updates do improve the quality of the camera, but all in all the general idea here remains about the same. The video capture on the Oppo N1 is actually quite good, and if you rotate that camera all the way around, you could probably get some pretty easy vlogging done. However, other than that, the rotating camera on the Oppo N1 is probably at best a great conversation starter. Some stealth photos might add some fun to your smartphone experience, but that's a situation you won't always find yourself in, nor should you try to. So despite all of the possibilities that were opened up with having a rotating camera, we still don't find that the Oppo N1 allows you to get pictures as easily as we would have hoped. And finally we come to the software. I know, I know, you're wondering about the CyanogenMod developments. We did see earlier this year that Oppo and CyanogenMod teamed up in order to bring what was affectionately called the CyanogenMod phone, in a way that is supposed to be the N1. However, the version that I have is not the CyanogenMod phone. That will be a limited edition that will be released later this year. However, if you still want to get CyanogenMod put onto your N1 that originally has Color OS, Oppo will have all of the tools that you need ready in the coming weeks. So what we get instead is Color OS, the evolved version of the user interface that we saw in the Find 5. Quite literally, it is a skin over classic Android elements with a few different and unique features baked in. In particular, the entire interface can be changed via different themes and add-ons. Of note is the Color OS edition of dedicated media areas, like for the camera and for playing music. After that is a live weather feature that allows for the whole home screen to reflect real conditions. One of the more functional features is somewhat hidden. Drag down from the very left of the notification dropdown and you'll get a canvas on which you can draw any number of programmable gestures. It's a nice way to get straight to where you need without too much fuss. However, after all of this, Color OS is basically a pretty classic Android experience. The home screens are your customization canvases, and then you have the app drawer, which can actually be modified with multiple pages for arranging your applications freely. And though we know that translations between regions is likely the cause of this, I did however find a couple of typos across the board. 
Color OS does come with a number of really smooth transitions, flourishes, if you will, that have an ooh factor to them. It makes for an almost ethereal experience, especially when you use one of the lush wallpapers. It could just use a little bit more polish. Overall, however, you have a very functional and very elegant operating system in the Color OS. While we don't have too much information regarding the final price point of the Oppo N1, it should come in at around $600 or possibly more, and that's considering a conversion from Chinese currency to US dollars. It may come in at a little bit more, it may come in at a little bit less, but considering all that the Oppo N1 comes with, we wouldn't be surprised. And so, there you have it, the Oppo N1. If large screens are looking to be our future, Oppo got a lot right in this particular release. But if you still aren't convinced a 6-inch phone is for you, maybe all that was added in will entice you. Despite some finicky consistency, the rotating camera is a great idea that could use better stabilization and perhaps a dialed-back flash. The Color OS is elegantly functional, though plenty of Western users will probably want CyanogenMod. And despite its size, it's hard to argue with build quality on such a well-put-together device. Size truly does matter when it comes to the Oppo N1. However, if its size is the only thing that's keeping you from liking this phone, well then maybe you should give it another try, and you might end up enjoying it just as much as I did. As always, thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this full review of the Oppo N1. Stay tuned to Android Authority for all of the best coverage, and follow us on social media. Our Google Plus links are found in the description below. If you want to follow me from time to time, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram under the handle Josh Salutes, and also on Google Plus as Plus Joshua Vergara. Drop us some likes on our videos, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to share our videos with whomever you wish, because we're Android Authority, and we're your source for all things Android.